hear that good posture is essential for good health. We recognize poor posture when we see it formed as a result of bad habits carried out over the years and it's evident in many adults. But only few people have real grasp of the importance and necessity of good posture. In this documentary, we will talk to a chiropractor and a gym instructor to educate and demonstrate right posture when driving, eating, working behind a computer, carrying items, among others. What are some of the disease conditions related to bad posture and how can you correct your posture? Stay with us as we unravel the secrets to good posture. Hello guys, welcome to Health Africa on AAU TV. We are here at the Nova Wellness Center to discuss posture with Dr. Na Ashele Dodo. So when you hear posture, what comes to mind? How you sit to drive, how you sit at the office, carrying things on your head and all of that. So we are going to have this discussion with her. Join me on this adventure and I promise you it will be very interesting. <laughs> Welcoming us to your center. You have a very lovely center. Thank the atmosphere you. alone will heal you. Thank you. All right, so I'd like us to go into the discussion. What then is posture? So, posture is the alignment of your body um, under different circumstances. So, you have posture that you use to sit, you have standing posture, you have sleeping posture. And um, the posture you take when you're doing different activities during the day. Now, sometimes if you have bad posture though, it can lead to certain health problems. And, and that's why it's very, very important that as much as possible, you maintain proper posture throughout your daily activities. Okay, so you mentioned the alignment of the body. Can you consciously try to correct your posture? Like sometimes I sit and I'm like this, mm -hmm. so I consciously try to straighten up. Can you consciously try to straighten up or it's something that is there you can't do anything about? Oh, you can correct your posture. There are so many um, exercises and um, you yourself knowing that, like you rightly said, you sit like that. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to train your self to sit up straight it will take a while but eventually you can correct that posture and the reason why it's correctable is that our muscles have muscle memory okay okay so for instance i always tell people um, when you go to the gym and you want to develop some um, bicep muscles you lift heavy weights yeah. and then over a period of time because your muscles have memory they remember that you've been doing this activity and those muscles bulk up, okay. right? Mm -hmm. It's because of muscle memory. Okay. So in the same way, if you are slouched like that, with time, you can train your back muscles to hold up a straight posture. Okay. Yes, even though it takes a lot of persistence and a lot of um, personal self-will and discipline that you're always going to keep your shoulders up. But yes, it's doable. Oh, so what are the types of posture there? So like I said, the sitting posture. Okay. And under sitting posture, we can talk about posture at the office, because your chair in the office will definitely be different from your couch at yes. home. So there's office sitting posture, there's posture at home, there's posture even in church, because you know the church pews, I always say, are probably the most uncomfortable chairs um, you can have. And then we have sleeping posture as okay. well. Some people like to sleep on their stomachs, some people like to sleep on their backs, some people like to sleep on their sides. Then we also have standing posture. This, um, the posture that the army men, for instance, would use. Standing up very straight, shoulders um, width apart, and all that. So all these things are different types of posture. Even when you're picking something from the floor, 
how do you pick it up? What type of posture do you use? Okay. Do you bend at the waist? Do you squat? So all these are different ways that one can hold up the normal alignment of their body. Oh, so when it comes to posture, when you're trying to lift up something, what's the advice or the best uh, posture to adapt? So most people tend to bend at the waist. Yeah. So we can demonstrate that when we go into the therapy room. Okay. But most people tend to bend at the waist. Mm -hmm. We recommend that you keep your spine straight as much as possible. So when you're bending at the waist, imagine that you're pushing your spine um, over mm -hmm. the waistline. It's better to keep the spine straight, but bend the knees to pick up that um, heavy object from the floor. Okay, and then when it comes to sleeping posture, Okay, so some of us like to sleep on our backs, okay. sometimes on the stomach. Which one is the best? So sleeping on the back is the best sleeping posture. Yes, so um, when you sleep on your back, what happens is you maintain what we call anatomical position. Okay. So what that means is that you, you maintain your body's posture as it's supposed to be. That neutral position. But when you sleep on your stomach, for instance, you realize that because you don't want to suffocate, first mm -hmm. of all, you have to bend your neck, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. that takes your neck out of its neutral position. That's number one. Number two, when you look at the spine, you see that the spine has some curves. Mm -hmm. Now those curves are supposed to be maintained throughout whatever you're doing. But when you sleep face down, it's as if you're um, putting pressure on those curves and they are attempting to straighten up. So what that does is it puts a lot of pressure on the disc. You see there's some rubbery looking substances here. Mm -hmm. So the pressure on the disc as well as the nerves mm -hmm. can cause a lot of pain. So most people who sleep on their stomachs will tell you that when they wake up in the morning, their first few steps is a bit painful because of the pressure that has been on the spine through the night, okay? So we do recommend a lot here at the clinic that you sleep on your back as much as possible. But if you can't do that, then you can try sleeping on the sides. Okay. Either side is fine. Okay. And that will help maintain the spine in its natural form. Okay. If you are having a lot of back pain or waist issues, then we recommend that when you sleep on your back, you keep a pillow behind the knees. Okay and that will help take some of the pressure off of the waist so it reduces the pain. Okay. And then when you sleep on the side too, you can put the pillow in between the knees and that will also help balance out your hip and your knee area to help reduce the pain. To help reduce the pain, what about this side of the body, the sides of the stomach? So that's why we recommend that when you sleep on your sides, you switch. So as much as you can, you sleep on the side a little bit because when you sleep on one side, you realize that you are stretching the other side out. So when you switch, then you have a good balance. Okay. So what will be some of the health consequences that bad posture can cause? So very, very commonly, bad posture can lead to um, back pain, neck pain, headaches, general joint aches, for instance, people who are working behind their computers, mm -hmm. who are rolling their shoulders in, maybe the whole day they are like that, you know, so you put a lot of pressure on the joints, the knee joints also, if you don't have a very supportive chair, for instance, maybe you're very tall and your chair doesn't have a wide pan, as we call it, you can have knee problems because the knee will be hanging. So um, foot issues, all these things, wrist, people who type a lot, mm -hmm. like administrators or secretaries who are typing all day long. If the wrist and the elbow are not in a good position or are not properly aligned, they can also develop wrist issues. So all these things can come up due to simple poor posture and that's why we like to talk about posture a lot here because we believe that if you improve your posture then you're able to maintain your spine much better. Okay. So if you improve your posture can it have a general 
good effect on your general health? Absolutely. Um, for instance, I've noticed in my um, eight years of experience that a lot of people who have asthma, mm -hmm. so as you know, asthma is um, difficulty breathing because your lungs are not functioning very effectively, so you have a difficulty getting oxygen in and carbon dioxide out. So a lot of people who have asthma also have something we call kyphosis, yeah. which is what you were asking yeah. me about. So I can use my plastic spine here to demonstrate what kyphosis is. Okay. So somebody who has a kyphotic spine is a spine which looks like that, okay, in varying degrees. So when your spine is bent here, bear in mind that the lungs may be sitting about here in the upper thoracic area. So when the spine is bent this way and your lungs are being squeezed, that can lead to things like asthma or um, chronic coughing and things like that. And the reason is that the lungs are not um, having enough room to, to function well. So yes, when you have bad posture and you can improve it, it can help your lungs to function better and therefore things like asthma will also improve. Okay, so before you brought in kyphosis, we were, talk we were talking about, okay, so I'm bringing in scoliosis. Okay. Can bad posture also lead to scoliosis? Okay. So yes, um, very, very bad posture, which is not dealt with in the long run, can lead to scoliosis. For instance, if you look at um, kids mm -hmm. carrying very heavy school bags, and unfortunately, those who use the one strap, mm -hmm. so instead of putting both straps at the back so that your back is even, you see that they carry a very, very heavy school bag on one shoulder, and then naturally you end up bending like that. So you can imagine um, you, you start school with a normal spine through primary all the way through JHS, SHS, if you are using that posture, yes, it can lead to scoliosis. Okay. However, most people who have scoliosis, the cause of the scoliosis is what we call idiopathic. Okay. Idiopathic means that we are not sure what caused it. Okay. However, most people have linked it to congenital defects meaning that they were either born with it or it appeared very early on in life. Mm -hmm. It could have been um, the birthing process, how baby was laying in mom's abdomen before baby came out. It could have been a fall very early on in life as a baby. All these things can also lead um, to scoliosis and scoliosis that is not managed, especially in children. In my experience, I noticed that with kids who have scoliosis, it becomes more of a self-esteem issue, even more than the pain. Yeah. Because most kids who have scoliosis don't necessarily have pain. The pain usually comes on as an adult mm -hmm. or during adolescence, mm -hmm. yes. And that's why it's very difficult to, to even know that there's scoliosis because most children with it will never complain of pain. When the hormones start coming in or they're at school and people start to ask them, why is your back looking funny? That is when you know they realize that they even had a problem. Mm -hmm. So you realize that apart from the pain, there's also self-esteem issues that come up with scoliosis. And that's why we always say that we need to have children evaluated. We need to have children checked for some of these problems so that if it's caught early, then there's a lot that can be done to treat it. Okay, so what would be some of the symptoms in both children and then adults? Um, so in children, most of the time, if it's very severe, mm -hmm. you can see that the back looks crooked or it looks funny. Oh. Sometimes if the degree of scoliosis is not that severe, you may not, it may not be visible to the naked eye. Oh. But in very severe cases, as they are walking, you could see that the back is crooked. Sometimes you realize that the shoulders are very uneven. Sometimes you realize that their hips 
So when they wear a skirt or when they wear some shorts, you realize that one side is always higher than the other. Okay. For females, you realize that maybe one bra strap cannot stay. It's always coming oh, nice. off. So these are all some signs. And then also pain. You know, pain mm -hmm. is um, the most common symptom for especially adults. Um, you realize that you're having pain sometimes. It could be the general back all through from upper back to the waist area. Sometimes to maybe in one area, mid back portion. So all these could be signs that there may be things like scoliosis, kyphosis or other postural abnormalities going on. Okay, so what would be some of the treatment models you would take a scoliosis or kyphosis patient to? Great, so we use the chiropractic treatment. I'm a chiropractor, as you already know. So our main mode of treatment is the chiropractic adjustments. Right. And with that, after looking at x-rays and performing a whole lot of tests, um, we're able to tell how the spine is crooked or where the spinal vertebrae have gone out of place. Yeah. We call those subluxations. That is when um, one or more of the spinal bones has gone out of its normal place and is putting pressure on the nerve. Yeah. So for instance, if this vertebrae is properly aligned, there's no pressure on the nerve. Mm -hmm. But once the spine goes out of its normal place, then there's pressure on the nerve. Sometimes it's one vertebrae, sometimes it's multiple. Because when you have scoliosis, it looks like that. So one part of the spine can be going this way, another part can be going reverse. Sometimes it's one big C curve like that. There are so many different types of scoliosis. Okay. So what we do is to use our hands to go in and very gently align the bones as much as possible back to their normal position and that takes the pressure off of the nerve so that information flow from the brain is restored we don't use any drugs we don't use any surgical procedures we believe that all the power lies in the spine so once we're able to take away the pressure from the nerves the nervous system which is your body's master system mm -hmm. functions better and all these other things um, go into their right place. So that's why we focus on doing the chiropractic adjustments for people who have scoliosis, especially when the degree of scoliosis is um, less than 40 degrees. Okay. There are varying degrees. Some people can have 10 degrees, so that's easy to that's fix. Easy. 20, 30, once you hit 45 upwards, then it becomes more difficult to use conservative treatment. But even that, we've had some successes. However, by 50 degrees, a lot of the times, the organs are also being affected. Because, for instance, you can have something like that. So whatever organ is at the peak of the curve mm -hmm. may be severely affected. And it's at that point that most people may need surgery. Yes. But if it's a degree that chiropractor can help, um, usually below 40 degrees, then yes, we're able to use the adjustments. We'll also add some exercises. Mm -hmm. um, we call something the foam roller. We're able to use the foam roller to help with the muscles around the curve to be rehabilitated, to be able to hold the spine better. Okay, so is there ever a case where there's a, a space between any of the two bones mm -hmm. other on the spine? Yes. So, like these spaces? Yes. yes. So these are the disc, the intervertebral disc. Mm -hmm. And yes, sometimes when you have scoliosis, the disc can be degenerated or it can reduce. So when that happens, then the two bones become very close to each other. Yeah. And that squeezes on the nerves and it's a very painful condition mm -hmm. so we see this type of degeneration more in the adults so you can have scoliosis as a child and not necessarily have degeneration the degeneration usually happens slowly as you age so we see that more in adults okay so using your hand to do the adjustments of the back mm -hmm. 
wound the bone break or like <laughs> I don't even know how to access mm -hmm. but then trying to straighten it up mm -hmm. using your hand won't there be a breakage of a bone okay. or any other thing absolutely not that has not happened since um, the invention of chiropractic no the adjustments <laughs> are very 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 minute okay. and um, it's it's done especially if you've gone to a qualified well accredited chiropractor and I'm saying this because there are people who have not been to chiropractic school and attempt to do these things but if you've gone to a, um, a well-trained licensed chiropractor especially after we've seen x-rays we know exactly where to put that very gentle motion in the joint to bring it back to its normal place. So it's not like we are moving the bone, you know, so that there may be a break somewhere. No, okay. it's a very, very, very gentle um, thrust that is put in a very specific spot okay. so that the bone um, goes back to its normal position. And it's done over a period of time. So it's not like after one okay. adjustment, the bone okay. is readjusted into its normal place. No, it's done over, a period so a month two months three months even six months so very 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 minute um, forces into the spine over that period of time is what will bring the correction okay so those this will be my last question so that we can go into the physical part okay so for normal massage when mm -hmm. you come back from work and you're tired and then you just need a normal massage to so just relax your back right. do you necessarily need a chiropractor to do that because i'll normally massage my mom at home okay. with just rub and then i'll just be pressing and doing my own thing then right. i'm done right so massage is totally different from chiropractic first of all mm -hmm. so chiropractic focuses on the spine like okay. i've been saying mm -hmm. so we um have to look at x-ray see how the, the vertebrae have gone out of place and then we know how to work on the spine okay. a chiropractic adjustment takes about five minutes to do so it's very quick we figure out we feel the spine we know which bones are not moving well we perform the adjustment and that's it a massage um, session mm -hmm. focuses more on the muscles that surround the spine, the, spine. That the muscles that are on the body's joints okay so um a lot of chiropractors don't even know how to massage myself included i don't do massage but i have massage therapists oh, yeah. who do it and and it works it complements the adjustments, adjustments. very well okay. because sometimes in addition to the spinal misalignments a lot of people also have very tight and stiff muscles so as we do the adjustments we're able to add the massage therapy and it, it, together it, it helps with these spinal issues. Okay. Um, as far as rubbing your loved ones at home, what I always say is um, if they have a problem, then it's best they seek professional um, massage therapist to help them because okay. we've known of people who don't do massage and they do it and people have gotten hurt and things like that. So especially um, for the elderly, who may have some degenerative joints and things like that, I would recommend that they see a professional to do the massage therapy. However, a little rub here and there for your significant other or um, a parent, a child, so long as you're not going in deep and it's very, very light, maybe I wouldn't do it on the spine though. I would okay. avoid the spine because it's very delicate. There are so many nerves that are coming out from the spine, so I will try to stay away from the spine. But yes, a gentle wrap here and there is what we could, we could, we could recommend for at home. Okay, so wrapping up, I'd like you to tell maybe a driver out there, a kaya you out there about their posture, how they should actually sit to drive okay. and all of that. Okay, so for long distance drivers, for instance, we always say that it will help to keep a small pillow in the lower back region. Yes, you realize that there's a curve in the lower back. So mm -hmm. as you're sitting, you can keep a small pillow there and it will force you to sit upright whilst you're driving so that you are not slouching too much, you're not bending. It will be uncomfortable to bend if um, the pillow was there. And then also what I always say is, 
every two hours, especially if you're driving very long distance, let's say you're going from Accra to Bolgatanga, um, at least every two hours, you need to take a few minutes break walk around a bit and then you can continue because after a while if you've sat for so long you realize that your legs can get numb because circulation is not as good so it's it's important that you take a break maintain good posture as much as possible and and that will help maintain the spine and then for um kayas uh, people who are carrying very heavy loads and things like that in the markets wherever it may be what I would say is don't carry um, more than necessary, okay? So especially putting things on your head, you realize that I mentioned the disc. So the disc are the rubbery substances. So carrying very heavy loads over a period of time, you are squishing those discs and they can slowly wear out to the point where there's no disc at all and that can cause a lot of issues. So I personally personally don't recommend carrying heavy loads on our heads because I've seen young people who have had some of these um, traits or have done some of these heavy carrying and you look at their x-rays, they look like they're 70. Yeah. And it's because of their activities. Yeah. So if it is possible for you to push rather um, it's better but if you absolutely have to carry a heavy load then i'll say keep it as light as possible and then again take breaks in between you can't be doing that from 6 a.m all the way to to 5 p.m and you're having heavy loads on your head throughout it's going to have a big effect on your spine okay. and if not if care is not taken you can have some complications too down the line all right thank you very much doctor now now we are moving on to the therapy room please stay with us So we're going to show you how we do the chiropractic adjustment today. So Wisdom is going to relax on this table. Put your hands down here. So the first thing we look out for are the leg lengths. And of course, this is after we have looked at the x-rays and done all the initial assessment. So we want to see if the leg lengths are even. Any imbalance here tells us that there could be what we call a pelvic misalignment. So when the pelvic bone goes out, one leg becomes longer or shorter, okay? So when we look at wisdom, wisdom please relax, we can see that the right leg is shorter. So what I'll do is, I'll put this leg over here and that opens up the right pelvic joint. And then we use a technique here for our chiropractic adjustments called the drop technique. So these table pieces can drop and it aids in the adjustment, okay? So as we correct the pelvic misalignment, I'm gonna put some pressure here. And you hear a loud noise. So we do that about two times. And then when you come back to check the leg length, most of the time you realize that it's balanced. Now this one has even gotten a bit longer um, than before. So that's good. Then, so we know we have corrected the pelvic misalignment here. Then we go to the spine. First, we're going to feel the entire spine and we can tell the areas where the bones are not moving well like right here and most of the time the patients will give you feedback and they'll say yes that feels very tight so once we find it then we very gently like i told you i'm going to put a very very small thrust there okay and that corrects corrects that misalignment then we move to the next spot again that corrects the misalignment there. And one last time. 
Okay, so now we're going to do another drop technique on the neck to help with the curve. So before we do the traction, which we just saw, we're also going to do a bit of a drop technique on the neck here. Okay. So from the back, we have aligned the spine as well as the pelvic bone. So I'm going to have you turn and lay on your back with them. Now this, I believe, is the most critical of the adjustments. We're going to adjust the neck, and it's critical because when the impulses leave the brain, the first place they have to go out from is the neck. So even to reach the lower back or even the legs, the information has to go through the neck first. Yeah. So because of that, it's very critical that we have that area aligned well. So again, we're going to feel the neck we can tell where the bones are not moving well. Okay. Very good. So we have just completed his neck adjustment. So you see it's very quick. You find where the misalignment is, you correct it and that's it. Now, in patients who have scoliosis, we go a step further to um, correct that care. So I'm going to have you turn and lay on your side. You can face me, please. Okay, so if the patient has lower back scoliosis, let's say the curve is bending this way towards the left-hand side, then we're going to put some pressure on it. So we, again, using the drop technique. And I'm only going to do this once because he does not have scoliosis. And then we push. But on a patient who has scoliosis, we do this multiple times, four or five times. And it's almost as if we're forcing the spine that has gone out of place or has bent this way we're pushing it down. And the reason why um, we need to do it multiple times is that the muscles there, the ligaments, as we keep putting that force through, they tend to loosen up so that the spine is able to go to its normal um, position, okay? So we just did it in the lower back. If it was just a, a one area scoliosis, it's only in the lower back then we leave it at that. But sometimes they may have it from the upper back all the way down in different directions. So then we will turn into the other direction and also um, do the drops on that side too. So these are some adjustments that we do at, um, for scoliosis. Now for people who have kyphosis also, we can also do something for them. Turn and lay on your back again. Come down once a little bit more. Come on. All right. So for people who have kyphosis, usually their spine is bent forward. So for them, we'll elevate this upper back area and we push downwards. Again, that is opposing the spine in the direction that it is. And over a period of time, the muscles and the ligaments in that upper back area would also loosen up so that the spine can have a better alignment there. Okay, so Dr. Na, please, in your years of experience, do you think Ghanaians or maybe people in Africa normally walk into a chiropractic center to check their posture, to check their spine, to the, just the general health of their spine? Is it that common for someone to just walk in? It's not very common. Once a while it does happen. Uh, maybe after somebody may have seen a program um, educating people on the spine, they may want to just come and have a check. Okay. However, most people who walk in here already have a problem. Yes, most of the time, it may be back pain, neck pain, headaches. So most of the time when they come in, they have these problems and we're able to help them. But we actually recommend that you don't wait till the problem starts before you come in for treatment. It's best that you have a general checkup, even for children. 
like I mentioned, a lot of these spinal problems, if it is caught early in children, then it's easier to correct them when it's too late. So yes, we recommend that people come in and have checkups done. Okay, so what would be the average cost of the whole process, just on an average, so that someone who wants to visit will know what to... It's very, very difficult for me to give uh, an average um, cost. A, a cost. Okay because everybody is different. Like I told you, sometimes some people, it may be a one month treatment plan, sometimes it's three months, sometimes it's six months. So depending on the condition, the age of the person, how long they've had the problem for, we have to put all those things together and then come up with a treatment plan that will help them. They are specific conditions. So it really ranges. All right. Yes, so since we are wrapping up here, what will be your final words or words of advice to someone out there who doesn't know the state of his spine? Okay. So what I'll say is that um, the spine is probably one of the most important um, part of your body. You need your spine to do everything. And the nervous system, which is the master system, is in the spine. So it's very important that you take care of it. If you have, um, if you've had a history of back pain or um, you've had neck pain, headaches before, don't just ignore it. Don't wait till it becomes worse before you want to seek treatment. You can come to Nova Longa Center, we'll look at your spine, we'll do several tests. If we need to do x-rays, we can do that and we can tell you how well your spine is. And if there's a problem, then we can use natural means like chiropractic, massage therapy, exercises, physiotherapy to help you. So what I can say is take care of your spine, do your best to make sure it's always erect, whether you're sitting, whether you're sleeping, whether you're standing. And if you would want to have a, a full knowledge of what's happening in your spine, come to Nova Wellness Centre and we'll do our best to help you do that. Thank you very much, Dr. Overs. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks for coming. I really enjoyed my stay here. Excellent. And I've learned a lot. Wonderful. All right, thank you. I'm Esther from Nova Wellness Center. So we are about to do translation. So we usually do this for those who have what we call scoliosis. That's when their spine is a little tilted. So depending, depending on which side is tilted, so sometimes you have it bent to the right side at your thoracic area, and then at the left side at the lumbar area. And sometimes too, you could have it at the opposite. But what we usually do, most of the times the normal common ones are from the upside is from the right thoracic, and then the lower part is from the lumbar. So I'm going to set him up. So that's the right side. So from her, his right side, this is the side that we are going to use the foam roller. We are trying to push the spine that is tilted to the right side more. So we are trying to push it inwardly. And then we push the other side too so that it will be straightened up. Okay. So you bring your boom here. So you just relax. Then you open your legs up. So we usually start from a minimum number of two minutes. Because the body is not used to this already. We start from two minutes, then we increase with two minutes till we get to about 20 minutes. Then we come down gradually again to two minutes again. Sometimes we also advise the patients to pay attention to their body and how they are feeling. Some people can't go beyond some minutes. So when we know those people, we reduce their minutes they go home. So we are going to do this for two minutes. Then we change to the other side. Yes, yes. so this is actually going to help to push the bone that is out of position, that's the scoliosis, the curve in there is going to help to push it inward, trying to straighten the spine up. But we don't just do it once, so we do it as a continual. Okay. 
Okay, so we change to the other side. So at the lower part, it's going to lie on this side. So raise yourself up. Yeah, maybe my hair is going to raise yourself up. Yeah, my hair is going to raise yourself up. Mm -hmm. A little up again. So he will lie on that side too for two minutes. Yeah. Okay. So, oh my God. so when we are done to get up, we just move the pillow from the leg and then you move both legs forward. So you move both legs forward and then you push yourself up. So that is the correct way we get up. Okay, so that's the demonstration of the foam roller. My name is Wisdom. Um, I'll be taking you through the um, the stretching machine here. So um, basically, um, depending on the kind of problem you come with, we have different kind of processes for you. So um, we have the lower back, the hamstrings, and all sort of stuff patients come here with. So um, when you get on the machine, first off, you make sure you have your wristband on to prevent you from falling. So like this, yeah, all set. And next, you will put your both knees on the pad like this. Yeah, so first off, you are dealing with the lower back. Yeah, so both arms on the upper bar like this and then you stretch as far as you can go. So mostly it's 10 to 30 seconds, but I prefer 15 seconds because I'm the lazy type, so something like this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, and 15. So after the 15th count, you come up and then you relax a bit, then you go again. So um, for each, uh, with the lower back, we do it at most five times. So once is 15, so for five times, 50 seconds, 50 seconds, 50 seconds, yeah. So let's move to the, um, the upper back. So with the upper back, you turn your arms upside down like this, and then you stretch like the first one I did. So something like this is okay. So, so same 15 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. So you come up. So someone might come in here with a shoulder problem. So with the shoulders, we cross your arms like this like this yeah so you stretch the same way so with this stretch to intensify the i mean to intensify sorry the stretch you look up like this and you look to your left and to your right so during the stretch like this one two three four five six seven eight 15, so you come up. So it's remember it's for five times. So each round is 15 seconds. Yeah. So let's do with uh, the hamstrings. Yeah. So with this one, you hold the lower bar. You stretch any of the legs first. So I choose the left leg. So you stretch it up on the knee pad like this, and then you stretch. So 15 seconds. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and then fifteen. So you do the same thing for the right leg. So 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, we are done. So um, next, we have the exercise for the hips, the leg, and the back. So with this one, it's a bit confusing, but... So let's deal with the left leg first. So you stretch the left leg towards the right leg, something like this. And then you hold only the right upper bar. I mean the left upper bar, sorry. So like this, and then you stretch. So same 15 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, and then 15. So we are done, 15 seconds. So the right one, you hold the right. So if it's the left, you hold the left bar only. If it's the right, you hold the right upper bar only. That's for the hips, the leg, and the back. So you stretch one and then 15. We are done for this one. So we have the inner thighs exercise also. Hello there. So we are here at the Body Fitness Center here in Dansoman to talk about posture. Vera, so we are talking posture today. I would like you to take us to some of the exercises you do here at Body Fitness Center. Okay, so in Body Fitness Center, we have like 12 exercises we do here, but just to mention a few, we do yoga, uh, we do combat 360, mm -hmm. we do African dance, and then we do abs 360. So this is just a few of some of the things that we do here. Yeah. And all those exercises I'm talking about, correct, posture. Okay. Yeah. So, so all these things you mentioned, you take into consideration the posture of the person before you start doing everything. Very much. And, you know, even before a person or you train somebody, you have to be sure of his or her status, okay? So the weight should be taken in consideration, not just the weight, but then also the health status, okay? So maybe I might have a back or a waist pain. I can't just come in and then start with maybe jogging or joining aerobics. I have to go through some procedures. So. That is what we eventually do here. Well, it's checked check very before we start. So when the person registered or before a person will be part of us, we have to get your weight. We have to get, um, if you have any health problem, we have to get it. And if you have any health problem, we would love you to, for you to check or to see a doctor first before we even start working out with you. So we know the type of exercises we are supposed to give you. So do you do some exercises to correct posture here? Yes, okay. a lot. So taking that into consideration, yoga, we have yoga exercises. That's an example, like a yoga exercise. We have in yoga, we have um, downward facing dog. We have the child pose. We have um, um, the plank pose, uh, higher plank, and then the lower, we have the a cobra pose, all those so things are exercises that correct his posture. Okay. So we'll be demonstrating them for sure. Yes. Thank you. exercises that can correct posture be it the lower back or the upper back and I'm here with Vera to do this and it will be very interesting to stay with us. Vera can we get started? Yes okay so our first pose you're moving into a child pose okay. okay so to a child pose we open our legs so open your legs then stretch your arms a little bit in front slowly stretch relaxing on your legs don't make sure you relax make sure you open your legs and then stretch your two arms together Bring the head down, make sure your chest touches the floor. Okay. So, uh, stretch it out a little. Great. So, doing this, you feel the stress section mm -hmm. around your back, yeah. around your arms, around your neck, around the waist. And then it also helps in blood circulation as well. Okay. okay. So, with this, you can move a little bit of your glutes, moving your waist left and right. So, try a little, hey. do a little bit of movement from your left. And your right. Feeling the stress section around your arms, okay. around your back, around your waist. 
So let's count just 10 seconds. There we go. 10, 9, nine 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Exhale. So slowly come up. So how do you feel? I mean, at the end of it, you feel the pain, the stress the section pain, yeah, around back, your back, shoulders, your shoulder. Yeah. So anybody with a back pain or a shoulder pain, this is one of the pushes or exercises to do to correct it. The more you do it, the more you feel the stress section around your upper back, around your arms as well. So that is what it does. Okay, so from there, let's move into a downward facing dog. To a downward facing dog, we slowly tap on our toes tap on your toes then you stretch your two arms to the edge of your mat whilst you step on it stretch your arms and feel the stress section around your shoulders around your back so you're not just feeling that stress section around the side you're feeling the stress section around your legs around your armstrings so you have any armstring problem this corrects it so stretch it out so whilst doing pushes like this, you're supposed to take a deep breath in, be breathing in and out. So we count one, two, three, four. Make sure your head is down. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, slowly relax. Great. So we're moving to our next posture. Okay. So with our next posture, we're going to work both on our back, both on our spine, and our arms as well. Okay. So chest out. So that's a cow and a cat's pose. So our head is up, chest is out. Okay. Our head is up, our chest is out. So tell me where you feel your stress section. Where do you feel? Uh, middle part of my back. Exactly. Middle so. part of my back. And then a little bit of your upper part yeah. or upper back. Yeah. You feel the stress section too? Yeah, it's there. Around the arms. Around the arms. Exactly. Shoulder. Exactly. So we count 10, then we rotate. So one, two, three, four, five, six seven eight nine and ten now slowly move your head down okay once you move your head down you push your glutes in okay and then you feel the stress section around the shoulders around your back yeah okay here we go one two three four five six Seven, eight, nine, ten. Exhale, slowly come up. Great. So you're moving to our next posture. How do you feel? Relaxed, relieved. So the pain, it was stress in my back. Okay, so at the end of it, at the end of every um, stretch or every pose I'm going to give you today, you're going to feel relaxed and make you more relaxed and also this is what flexibility work out too. So all these poses are some of the yoga poses that you can do to correct postures. Okay, so on this section, behold, stretch your arms right in front of you. And then, so this is my right arm, so stretch your right arms. Great. Then lift your left leg. Now look straight to the arms and make sure your leg is in line with the don't worry with time. Slowly, slowly, great. There we go. Let's go. Now, make sure your palm is, okay, so your okay, palm is facing, palm. and then make sure you get the posture, so you bring the leg there, uh -huh, okay. great. There we go. Awesome, there we go. One, then give up two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, and ten. So you're leaving it down. <laughs> okay, so that's how it's going to be. Now, 
all the time, when you're starting with any exercise, it's not easy to actually get postures or things, right? Mm -hmm. So it takes time for somebody to get used to a particular thing, okay? okay? So to correct a particular thing, you have to go through a little bit of pain, you have to go through a little bit of struggle before you're able to get things right. Okay. But with time, the more you do it, the more your body get used to it. So, so you shouldn't give up. Long? I can't tell you how long because it depends on how consistent the person becomes. Okay, so let's take it for instance for me. Maybe let's say I have a back pain and I want to work on my back. There's a lot I have to put myself into. I have to make sure that I stay focused and ensure that all the time I do those exercises to ease those pain. So viewers, you heard it all from Pera. This has been Health Africa on the AAU TV. We are here at the Body Fitness Center to talk about posture. And we just did, we have exercise and we have demonstrated some of the things you can do to correct your posture and then to exercise on your back.